Hi, I'm Nikki Haverstock, and this is Cooper. Oh, oh, there you go, he got me. And this is my shirt, if you're just curious. Okay, and um, I'm gonna talk today about my publishing, sort of writing, marketing philosophy. Um, I am home alone <laughs> with the baby, and uh, so I think I've got him all settled. This is actually my second attempt at filming the video. So. Why should you care about my writing philosophy? Mm, well, you really should care a lot. And it's more not so much my writing philosophy, although it's all completely interconnected. It's like my business model would be a better way of saying it. And this is really important from anyone that you're gonna listen to and have advice from. Um, not so much because you guys need to perfectly agree, but understanding where you differ is gonna help you understand which bits of information are gonna be more or less relevant to you. This is something I like to know about all of the people that I listen to. And I love listening to people that are different. One of my favorite things that I have a video on it is Masterclass. And in the Masterclass videos, all of those people that I've listened to so far are traditionally published. And some of them have been in the industry for like decades. And the industry is different. You know, even if someone was to follow that path exactly, <laughs> my son's enjoying his Curious George. Um, even if you were to follow their path exactly, the industry has changed. The industry of 2000 is different than 2020, especially right now. Um, and so it's just good to know that. And it's the same when I talk to people who started indie publishing in 2011. And they, you know, sometimes they say stuff that I'm a little bit like, oh. But then I remember it was a different industry back then. You know, there weren't book bubs and thousands of other options. And a lot of the things that now were kind of like you have to have weren't required back then. And the way that you write books will inform your marketing. That's just how it is. Um, and the things that matter are things like traditional and self-publishing because you have limitations. So one of my favorite strategies is to set a book for free, get it out into the hands of people with the belief that these people will enjoy it. You know, not all of them, but my readers are out there and I, they will read this book and they will go, oh, I get it and they will go and read the rest of my books. And that happens, I see it all the time. Every time I set a book for free, I have a little bump in sales and then it slides down. So uh, it's, it's incredibly important to see all these points. Things to consider are traditional and self-publishing. Are you writing standalones? Are you writing in series? Um, are you genre or like literature, literary? Um, and genre as well. In general, genre is actually not as important as you think it is. So I have more in common as a writer, um, marketing wise, with someone who's maybe writing super hot paranormal romance and series that are self-published than I do with a traditional po cozy author. Um, I can learn a lot from a traditional co cozy author, but a lot of their marketing plans are just, are. are I can tell you just probably aren't going to work for me. Um, another factor to consider is personality and skill set. So a common mistake that authors make, and I see it all the time, is saying things like, I don't want to have a newsletter because I, as a reader, don't use uh, a newsletter. First off, you are not your, your reader. You might share a lot. There might be a lot of things like your voice may resonate with your reader, but you don't want to limit yourself to only the way you discover books because if that was true for me the only way i would i would be able to connect with readers is through one-on-one -on -one endorsements from my closest friends so um so but my skill set does matter because when i started i had newsletters i had freebie runs i had ams or ams ads didn't exist facebook ads and I was, I am very good with my newsletter. It seems to be, and so my ability to transform effort, my ROI, my ability to turn effort and time and money into increased royalties, for me is, has been significantly better with my newsletter. It took me a long time to figure out, but now it's something that I do, I can do really consistently every seven to 10 days. Um, I just kind of instinctively, I can go the road, I can just go out of habit, I can do it all. It takes very low mental resources and it's easy for me to do and, and I see a result. That's my skill set. Now, it doesn't mean that I just give up on things like ads. I revisit them, I try, I, I, I've gotten better over time, uh, all that kind of stuff. And so, skill set. So, I have some friends who are brilliant business people and they use languages that I don't even really understand. I mean, 
I'm smart enough to read a dictionary definition and understand what it is they're talking about. But then taking that next step, which is implementation, I just can't seem to do it in a way that has a meaningful ROI. So um, that is another factor that's going to, going to vary. So to actually get into my literal philosophy, and this is something that um, how much this resonates with you and how much you say, yes, this is what I want to do, will determine how useful my videos are to you. Um, and I'm doing this leading into, I had said I'm going to do a video, um, a breakdown. It's going to take a long time to put together because I have to dig up some, you know, five-year-old numbers. Uh, I want to do a video of my first year of publishing. And I realized heading into planning that, that there were so many questions I needed to answer. Why did I choose this path? Why did I do it this way? Why did I do a novella series? Why did I, you know, blah, 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 blah. Why didn't I do X, Y, and Z? comes back to what I'm talking about right now. So I thought I'll do this video first and then I can reference it in that video. And I'll probably do a lot of that is breaking out little chunks so people can then go to areas. Anyway, my writing philosophy when, um, does relate a little bit to what I read. And this is a case where this does make sense, which is I love series. Um, I don't even really watch movies very often. They have to really be like the funniest movie of the year. Because I, why would I go and spend an hour and a half with someone that is amazing and then never see them again? Why wouldn't I do a TV show where I can spend time with these people and watch their character arc over hopefully seven years? And you'll see if you go and look around my channel that I, we review a lot of shows and we watch a lot of comedies that are long lasting series. And, and so that's what I wanted to write. I wanted to find a character that I wanted to spend time with. And that informs the fact that I give away a lot of free books is because I believe my reader will read these books and be like, I want to spend time with these people and read the whole series. And from what I've seen from feedback from my readers, that's exactly what happens. And in fact, they'll go and they'll read other series of mine because they go, the writer, the voice underneath this book is someone I want to spend time with. And I find that incredibly flattering. I like genre fiction. So I am kind of dead down the middle of existing genres because I like that. And um, sometimes people say, well, genre fiction is so predictable. Yeah, of course. If you're tired and you sleep and you wake up feeling rested, is that predictable? I guess so, but that's the whole point. If you go to a meal and you eat a meal and you go, oh, it's so predictable. I ate and ate and ate and then I felt full. Oh, so boring. No, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. And genre fiction does that. Genre fiction makes a promise. This is what we're going to do. And it fulfills it. Whether we're talking about a happy, happily ever after. If we're talking about, do you want to say hi? Uh, if we're talking about uh, justice being served. If we're talking about, you know, and however, like in my books, it's all very safe. It's all very understandable. Sorry, this is, it's a little chaos here. So I love genre fiction. I love the fact that it's predictable. I love the fact that I know where I'm gonna get. You can take me on a wild adventure because in my genre, I know you're gonna take me home safely. Now, some people, some genre, not every genre has that same promise. In horror, they don't promise that everyone's gonna come home safely, but that's what, that's what, and I, I'm no expert on horror. So if you want to tell me what the genre conventions are for horror, please do. But I know that for my genre, that's what that is. I know that for romance, whatever obstacles there are, they're going to figure out how to overcome it. That, that's the promise of, uh, of their genre. Um, whatever. So, so we go on and on. That's actually a whole other video is what those are. But that is what I promise. So I am not out there twisting and turning. I am, I can buy into and I can get a, a very typical cover for the genre, blurb for the cover, because I am promising them that I'm going to be a genre writer. And then it's all the details. I mean, what makes a meal good or, or different isn't that you break all the promises and you're still hungry at the end of the meal. It's how we get to that point of satisfaction. So I'm a genre fiction. I rely on series. Um, and I, um, I entertain. That's what I'm not so much, there's people who just love to write 
and it's the act of, of putting words together that brings them joy. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not that person. I love to story tell and entertain. And words are incredibly important to get the right reaction, but they're not necessarily my first love so much as entertaining. So I, when I started, I had a plan. I invested in, now I got dogs barking outside. I invested in, in monetary things that, hold on. No, settle down. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't stop because I don't have time to edit because everyone's away. Anyway, um, when I started, I invested in things that were specifically good for a long lasting career that don't necessarily turn ROI. And that's things like just getting my name out there, making me visible so that people, when they go and they look for a book on Amazon, maybe they go, oh, I've heard of Nikki Haverstock. I should check out her book because author, I've seen her on authors I know. I've seen her in anthologies by authors that I like and stuff like that. So my philosophy is really around creating a large backlist that people can move through. So if I could hook them with one book, which is a very common thing. I just had someone say, hey, come in to, uh, not right now because of quarantine, but before that, you know, come in and we will give you free x-rays and this and this and this. If you, and the idea is if you go in once to this chiropractor, they're going to give you such great service. You're going to want to always go back. And so they're going to hook a new client, which is much more valuable. Um, uh, the, a returning client is, is valuable as opposed to having to constantly spend a lot of money to get new clients. So that is my publishing philosophy. I'm looking to make a career out of it. I'm looking to have a large backlist, long series, um, consistent promises. So that's all important. And the reason that's important is if you come to me and you say, I wanna be traditionally published. A lot of the marketing things that I do that I do every single week to get my books out there, are, are going to be really difficult for you to do unless you have a very understanding publisher who's going to work with you. Um, because I do a lot of last minute decisions based on how my sales are doing and sending books to free and stuff like that, pulling books and putting them in anthologies, stuff like that. If you come to me and say, I only want to do standalones and I plan to do a different genre every time, I'm also going to have a hard time giving you advice because my model is to hook in a reader and then have them um, go through my whole back, back list. And if you are in wildly different genres, tone, uh, heat level, everything, it, you're not going to get as much movement through your back list. Um, if you're planning on writing one book, one and done, maybe you want to write a memoir of the time that you saved 20 drowning kids from a school bus that had fallen into the ocean. And this is your one story. Like you're not going to do that again. Um, and it's a memoir. It's going to also a lot of my marketing stuff. A lot of it will. I mean, the principles work. So when we talk about like finding your readers and all that, that works. But the literal implementation of like, here's the service I use and then I put it into here and then I do this and I make this promise is not going to be as useful. So it's important to know the, the philosophy of the person that you're listening to so you can understand what you can learn from them and hopefully if you hear this and you go oh that is definitely what i want to do you'll understand better why my advice might be useful for to you or maybe why some advice doesn't so stay safe out there and i will catch up with you later